What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com, back with another SketchUp Essentials tutorial. So last week we talked a little bit about using the sandbox tools to create terrain. Now I'm going to talk about using some of those tools to come in and kind of organically model some shapes. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So uh, first thing we're going to do, if you remember, is we're going to turn the sandbox toolbar on. And really all you should have to do for that is just right click up here and find the uh, sandbox checkbox. Um, if you can't find that, you need to go into window, into your extension manager, and turn the sandbox tools on. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to create a grid. So we're going to use this from scratch, uh, create a sandbox from scratch option. And so basically what you're going to do is you're going to come in here, you're going to click on this, and then uh, remember this is going to ask you what you want your grid, grid spacing to be. So in this case, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to set my grid spacing to one foot. And then I'm going to click right here, and I'm just going to type in 20 feet. And then I'll type in 20 feet going the other way as well. So you can see this creates kind of a 20 by 20 grid. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to um, draw another like a canvas up here. So basically all we're going to do is we're just going to draw a pair of lines uh, running up and down just like this and you can use inferencing to make sure you draw them both to the right height and then just kind of draw a rectangle just like this and then what we're going to do is we're going to split this in half. So you're going to draw a rectangle and basically what we're doing is we're drawing something that's straight above our grid in here. So now we can come in here and we can kind of edit the shape that we want to draw. And so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to start off and we're just going to draw kind of a curvy shape. And uh, this is more of an example so it doesn't have to be super exact as to what you draw or anything like that. Um, so just come in here and draw kind of a curving shape on this face. And you can get kind of creative with the way you want that to look if you want to do that. So like if I come in here and I draw a shape like this, I can then erase out the extra pieces in here. And basically what I want to do now is I want to create a copy of this. And you can see how I drew half of this shape. And then I created a copy and I flipped it using the scale tool. So anytime you draw symmetrical shapes, it's a better idea to draw half of it and then create a copy of that and flip it and put it back on the other side because anytime something's symmetrical, you don't want to try to like exactly, you don't want to try to exactly duplicate what you did before when you can just create a copy and have it be duplicated for you already. And so uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to do the opposite of what we did last week with the drape tool. So what we're going to do is last week we drew kind of a road and we kind of draped it over a sandbox like this. Well this week we're going to do the exact opposite. We're going to take this grid and we're going to drape it over our shape that we created up here. So to do that all you're going to do is you're going to click on your group down here that has all your uh, grid stuff in it. And then you're going to come up here and you're going to select the drape option. And then you're going to click on this face. And you can see what that did is that took this grid right here and it draped it over the edges of this face just like this. So it basically projected this along this face and you can see how it stops at all the edges and everything like that. And so you can see that now, now we've been able to really quickly create a grid that we can come in here and we can edit with our sandbox tools. So the next thing we're going to do, and we can go ahead and hide this, or really you could probably delete it out. Um, either way, but what we're going to do now is first of all we're going to save our model because anytime you're working with the sandbox tools it's a good idea to save your model because all of a sudden you're working with a lot of geometry that you're creating, um, you're editing things in a way that kind of pushes SketchUp's engine a little bit. So it's always a good idea to save stuff before you come in here and start making changes. So once you've done that, you can come in here and you can start making some edits with the sandbox tools. So you can see how all of these are kind of individual geometry in here, just like this. So um, all these different boxes, each one of them is its own edge, its own face. So we can come in here now with the uh, smooth tool and we can come in here and we can start editing that. And so the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you don't have anything selected because if you come in here and you select everything, then you turn on the smooth tool, all it's going to do is it's going to kind of let you move everything around just like this, which isn't what we want to do. So what you need to do is make sure you don't have any geometry selected and then select this tool called smooth. And then you're going to click on that and you can see if I kind of zoom out that this gives me kind of a radius. Well, we want to go in and adjust the size of this radius so that it's not quite so big. So in this case, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to type 10 feet. 
I'm gonna hit the enter key. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna make the radius of my circle um, a lot smaller. And I'm actually gonna come in here and type in seven feet and see what that does. Because basically what I wanna do is I wanna come in here and I basically want kind of a brush that's as big as this circle right here. Because then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click in the center point right here. So I just single clicked. Um, you can click and drag as well. Either one of those things will work. So you can come in here and you can click and drag. You can see what that's doing is that's kind of stretching this face and it's kind of moving all the vertices between the different points. So you can see how I click that and kind of move this up. Well now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that a couple more times. So, and you, so I'm just coming in here and I'm single clicking and I'm just kind of moving this face up just like this. So you can see what that does is that gives me more of, more of an organic shape in here. So, and I can come back off the back side if I want to, and I'm kind of keeping everything centered on the middle of my model, just like this. So, I'm not coming in and editing one side or the other side, just because I want everything to stay kind, kind of symmetrical. And so you can see how all of this is symmetrical, just like this, and I've created kind of this organic shape in here. Well, now I'm gonna come in and I'm going to start uh, making some changes to this. So the first thing I'm gonna do and we're actually going to make this easy on ourselves is we're going to come in here and you you're probably going to need to have an extension like uh, selection toys installed that's something you can download from the extension warehouse but what that'll allow you to do is that'll allow you to come in here select everything just like this and then right click and it gives you all these options for deselecting selecting only or selecting so in this case i want to select this object and then i want to right click I want to click select only edges and so when I select the edges what that means is none of the faces in here are selected anymore literally just the edges in between and kind of the perimeter around here are selected and I'm also going to come in here and I'm going to right click I'm going to click deselect border edges so you can see how when I right clicked and I deselected the border edges, that means the edge around this whole object got deselected. And so this is a really useful set of tools. And again, you can download that from the Sketchication Warehouse and I will link to that in the notes below as well. But now that I've got all these edges selected, what I can do is I can come in here and I can click Soft and I can click Smooth. And then I can click off of this and you can see what that does when I smooth everything is that takes all your edges that are in here and it turns them into hidden geometry. So if I get a view hidden geometry, you can see how all those show up again. So I'm going to turn hidden geometry back off. But so basically now what we have is we have kind of this face in here along with this border around the perimeter. And so now I could come in, come in here if I wanted to, I could take this whole perimeter and I could use an extension like lines to tubes. And I could just create a tube all the way around the perimeter just like this. So this would be good for creating kind of a canopy type shape or something like that. But again, this is just kind of following one of the rules that I have in SketchUp, which is I can create pretty much anything as long as I can get a face um, that's following the, that's following kind of the path or um, as long as I can get a face that creates the shape that I want then I can come in here and I can select the geometry that I want in order to kind of detail it out and so there's a couple other things that you can do in here as well you can see what I did here is I, I hid this uh, this line that I drew kind of around this perimeter in here. That's why I can come back in here and start editing the rest of this. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna create kind of another canvas uh, drawing straight up and down. So basically what I'm doing is I'm going to go off the center point right here again, kind of the same way that I did before. I'm basically gonna come in here and draw a canvas shape that would cover the entire face of my object just like this. And so I'm just kind of using inferencing to draw this in. And then once I do that, I'm going to come in here and delete out these lines. And I'm actually going to make two copies of this, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But basically what I'm doing is I'm going to create a grid that runs sideways like this. And then I'm going to create another grid that runs up and down, and I'm going to drape that onto this model. And then I'm going to use that as kind of a guide to create... Um, 
some other like curtain wall type support shapes on here stuff like that so I'll show you what I'm doing here in a second but basically what I did is I took this inline I used the move tool in copy mode I made a copy down here and then I type in divided by 20 and what that does is that creates 20 copies between this point and the point that you set right here so you just type in divided and then 20 and hit the enter key and then once I've done that I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna come in here and do the same thing that I did before where I move a copy of this over here and so then you can come in and you can delete out this center geometry just like this and so now you've got this grid that you can drape over your object and so all you need to do is you just select this object and then you select the option for drape in the sandbox tools and then you click on your face and so now I'm gonna go ahead and group this so I don't have a whole lot of individual geometry I'm dealing with and then I'm going to divide it and so now what I have is I have a series of lines that run across my face just like this well then I can come in here I can select everything and then I can deselect the faces and I can deselect the boundary line because the boundary line I already have some geometry drawn for that and then I can come in here again with my uh, my lines to tubes extension and create a whole bunch of tubes running across my face just like this and you can see how that takes a while because it's generating a whole lot of groups down here you can kind of see that in the outliner um, but what that's going to do is that's going to create my tubes that run across my face just like this so now you can see what I've got is I've got my perimeter piece along here and then I've also got my tubes in the center just like this so now I've got this cool organic shape that kind of runs across this way and if we wanted to and I'm probably not going to do that in this video but you could come in here and you could do the same thing and create a grid that runs forward and backwards along this face just like this um, and then do the same thing so that you had more of like a square grid instead of just pieces running across just like this so and then once you've created an object like this um, there's a couple different things you can do but like for example you can come in here and you can triple click on this face to select everything in here and you can apply like a glass material to it just like this um, so you can see how that gives you kind of a translucent glass um, look and then the other thing you can do is you can come in here and you can adjust your style so right now um, these these are pretty clunky looking tubes just because the way that it has to draw them it draws them along each segment so you can see how it gets a little bit clunky but what you can do is you can go into your style and you can turn off profiles um, first of all which makes it look a little better and if you wanted to you could also turn off edges and so when you turn off edges what that gives you that is that gives you a much smoother um, more organic look to these objects even though they're made up of a bunch of different segments um, the other thing you could do is you could come in here and you could make these tubes a little smaller so maybe if you made these like a half inch diameter instead of a two inch diameter they'd look a lot smoother um, because you wouldn't have such big segmented pieces in here so anyway that's where I'm gonna wrap up this video I'll leave a comment below let me know what you thought did you like this video are you doing anything like this have you done anything with sandbox tools before I just love having that sketch up conversation with you guys if you like this video please remember to click that like button down below if you're new around here remember to click that subscribe button for new sketchup content every week if you like what I'm doing on this channel please consider supporting me on patreon every little bit helps even if it's only a dollar a month that just helps me keep bringing you great sketchup content but in any case thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video thanks guys